Hello and welcome, boys, girls, and otherwise. I don't judge. Whatever you want to be, you be it. We're back with some more content, another video. This time, we're going to take a look at Ninjas in Pajamas, right? Because obviously, they've just recently signed Alexi B, as you can see on your screens. And that was a fucking doozy of a signing. I've got to be perfectly honest with you, even behind the scenes, people who are in the fucking know about CSGO did not see this one coming. It came out of left field. Now, looking at the context, right, let's just go through to Ninjas in Pajamas. Let's have a look at, at how they've been doing in recent months. And it hasn't been great, right? It, it's been, meh, it's been okay. It's been not a disaster. In general, they've been like a decent-ish team, sort of inside that top 10, never really threatening to win any big events. Um, but let's just go through and look at some of their results, um, you know, this year. Hang on, let's get off this screen. This screen's not the best screen to be using. Um, and if we just have a look at some of their events, um, yeah, there's just not anything particularly impressing. We'll, we'll go from the turn of the year, right? We'll go from the turn of the year. Nothing happening early on in the year. A top four at EPL, that's okay. The RMR, okay, you come third, but it doesn't really matter as long as you get through the RMR. Showdown, third to fourth. Problem is, is that did not qualify them for the final, so that third to fourth is not anything to be impressed about. They turn up at the major, they do nothing. They turn up at Dallas, they do nothing. They win this little shitty global esports tour event, which had no like decent teams. They were the best team there. And then Cologne is, again, nothing special. And the Blast Premier Full Groups, again, nothing special. But they do qualify if we look here. They finish fourth to sixth, which was enough to get one of the five spots, one of the six spots, sorry, on offer at the full finals. And then this recent EPL was, you know, those first games were a disaster. They got absolutely banged out by Fnatic and pretty comfortably dealt with by Spirit and Vitality as well. Um, beating Na'Vi when the group was basically already over doesn't really mean anything. And a 2-0 win versus Endpoint, you know, Endpoint were the, the bottom feeders of the group. So... What I think we can basically agree with is that this Ninjas in Pajamas roster needed some work. It was not working. Now, what were the problems with the Ninjas in Pajamas roster? We'll start there. The problems were a lack of a decent primary orper ever since Device moved to the bench. Essa Tag was quite simply not solving that problem. Fuzi, when he was standing in for the team, was serviceable. Like, he wasn't a complete disaster as an AWPer, but if you're going to justify the AWP role, you needed to be putting out more than Fousey was. And a lot of Fousey's value actually came from the fact he was a pretty decent rifler. It, arguably, I would say he was more effective with rifles than he was with the big green in his hands. Um, and that was a lot of where Fousey's, like, value came from. It was like, if you wanted to run five rifles or if you couldn't afford the AWP, Fousey was not suddenly a liability like some AWPers can be when they're asked to put a rifle in their hands. Now, like I say, Essa Tag just simply not good enough to be a primary. Nowhere near enough output is the basic problem. The AWP is probably the role in the game that is the most reliant on just getting frags, or their value is most accurately measured by just getting frags. AWPers need to get kills. You need to see a real return on the investment of buying an AWP. Esther Tag simply isn't doing that. He's not getting enough kills. He's not having enough impact frags with the AWP. He's not some crazy aggressive um, entry AWPer who's going to find your picks and open up rounds. He just wasn't doing enough with that gun. Also, Esther Tag kind of wasted in the primary AWP role, right? If he's not going to be a super amazing primary AWPer, one of Esther Tag's strengths and one of his best qualities is the fact that he is so versatile and effective as a rifler. He is an amazing piece to have in a team because he can round out the structure of your team really nicely. Do you need him to play X, Y, Z positions on CT side? He will play them and he will play them well. Do you need him to fill in on the T side and be a lurk or do you need him to be part of the inch pack? He will do those roles and do them pretty well. Esatag is great as that 
filler guy, right? And I know you often in, in any sport, you don't want to be known as the utility man who can do a little bit of everything, but it is genuinely really fucking useful. I think particularly in Counter-Strike, it's so useful to be able to play multiple roles, man. It's not like in a MOBA, like League of Legends or whatever, where you have one role and you play it every game, right? You're the jungler, you're the top lane, you're the mid lane or whatever. CS is different. You can play one role on one team or switch around to a different role at a later point or play a different role in a different team. And so Esetag is valuable for that reason. What else were the problems? We'll go through more problems, right? But but primary orping was one of them and the orp role in general not being effective, not being utilized well on an IP was a problem. Um, the next problem that I wanted to talk about is res. Res has the ability and the potential to be up there with a player like Nico. Res is so fucking good, man. His aim is amazing. His decision making and the way he reads the game can be so insanely high level. And we just don't see it often enough from Res. Obviously, during EPL, he got moved onto the primary orp role. And is this a solution? I just don't know. Now, we'll, we'll, first off, I want, to, um, I want to dispel a little bit of a rumor or a little bit of a misconception. There seems to be this idea that Rez is having like an incredible year. But if you look at his 2022, right, we've got like 1.11, 1.14, you know, pushing towards 80 ADR. Like these are all pretty decent stats. He's definitely a solid, good rifler in the top tier scene, right? We go to 2021. I mean, it's pretty much the same, right? His rating is a little bit lower, his impact's a little bit lower, but the numbers are largely the same or similar. Again, largely the same or similar for 2020. Largely the same or similar for 2019. A little bit worse for sure. 2018, again, like all of these numbers are actually super fucking similar. 2017 was a standout year for Rez. He was, he was good in that year. And as you can see, these are all actually like a little chunk in general better. But if we go to 2022, like... It's, again, comparable. His ADR's a bit worse. His deaths per round was a little bit worse, right? Oh, no, about the same. Um, you know, his kills per round was slightly better. His kills assisted was slightly better. Like, Reds is remarkably consistent on the average, right? 2022 is not any better of a year than Reds has had, particularly. It's comparable with 2017, which was his best year, yeah, but... The difference between his best year, 2017, and then his worst year, which is like, what, 2019? It's not that different. It's it's really, really not that different, like barely. It's super fucking comparable at the at the very least. Man, my man was looking, look at that. My man was looking dench in 2019. And then 2022, yeah, what the hell, man? Rez, you were hella dench in 2019. What happened? Did you just give up the gym? Fuck me. Fuck me. Anyway, sorry. Total diversion. Got off track there. I can kind of understand the idea, right? Rez is mechanically really good and maybe pushing him onto the primary AWP role is a way to get the most out of his insane mechanics. We saw some examples at EPL of where he was pushed onto the AWP where, yeah, it was like, okay, I, I see the proof of concept here, right? I see the idea Rez can be really fucking good. We'll look at this one because this was the, the series... Yeah, Rez is banging, right? Rez is absolutely murking nerds with the AWP. Um, you know, that Inferno game was great. If we look at the series overall, he was good. Lots of kills, good ADR. A little bit suspect on the first kills, but that's fine. So this endpoint game, you're like, okay, Broland's fucking balling out and Rez is doing well. Like, shit is happening that needs to happen for Nip to be good. Um, speaking of Broland... He's been fine, right, since he joined NIP. He's been pretty pretty solid in general. If we take a look, um, I'll just go complete statistics and look at his matches. Yeah, you know, he has some bad games. He has some good games. Often he gets his. Um, we won't look at these no-mix ones. But, like, playing for Nib, yeah, he's been, he's been pretty decent, actually. Um, not too bad. Some ba But, okay. He's been all right, Brolam. He's not been bad. He's been a solid to, to reasonably good rifler. 
Problem is, I think when you pick Brolan up and you'd say he's the best player in Sweden and he's the best rifler in Sweden and he, he is the guy, he's the man, we need to see more from Brolan, quite frankly. We need to see a little bit more than we have been seeing from him. I also think that whilst Brolan has been decent in terms of output a lot of the time, I don't necessarily feel like we've got the most impactful Brolan. Yeah, he's not like a wildly aggressive player who's going to like run in and, you know, headshot 10 people or whatever. Um, but if we look at his impact rating for 2022, it's actually pretty fucking good. So maybe I'm chatting shit. Maybe I'm chatting shit. Maybe I really am just chatting absolute bollocks. I think he's getting a lot of molecules kills for sure. I think he's alive in clutches pretty often. Maybe I'm being unfair, right? But I feel like we're just not quite getting as much out of Brolan as we could be. Now, what we have to consider next, right? Let's get rid of that stupid ad. Is what does Alexi B bring to the table? And will it solve some of these issues and some of these problems? Now, Hampus has a pretty loose calling style, pretty freewheeling approach to the way he leads NIP. And I'm not going to lie to you, I've said for a pretty long time, I'm not convinced that the way Hampus leads calls and plays is getting the best out of the type of players that Ninjas in Pajamas have. Previously, you've had Device, you've had Plopsky, you currently have Brolan, you currently have Rez. Less so S attack, but I think a lot of those players are going to do better in a bit more of a structured system. These aren't the type of guys who want to be given immense amounts of freedom to do whatever the hell they want. I think these guys are the type of players that are going to operate a lot better if they have defined roles, defined instructions, a defined structure around which they can play, right? It's just the nature of the way these players are, in my personal opinion, seeing them play in the past. And the problem is Hampus simply doesn't provide that style of calling. Hampus has always been this guy. He kind of does these wild and wacky things on his own, catches timings, you know, aggressive pushes, and then calls around his playmaking. And it creates a little bit of a wacky, particularly on T side. It can be a little bit crazy in the mid rounds. Now, I think that Alexi B, if he can bring in a little bit more structure, a little bit more of a standard maybe way of playing. I think that will do good for players like I say, like Rez and Brolan. Rez and Brolan are the two in particular that you want to be getting a lot of output out of. And I think that they will do better with a more structured and more systematic way of playing Counter-Strike. I don't necessarily think Alexi B is like, you know, the ultimate systems man, but we have seen during his time on OG, he can be a little bit more of a micromanage hands-on type of in-game in -game leader. And I think he was more of that kind of in-game leader on Ents. So I like the idea of Alexi B coming in from a leadership standpoint. I think his leading will suit NIP more than Hampus's has. And I think... This is no criticism of Hampus. I think Hampus could be a fantastic in-game leader on the right team. I just don't think his calling suited the personnel that Nip have had and has ever really suited the personnel that he's been playing with on Ninjas in Pajamas. Next, we have to think about how Hampus himself is going to do now that he's been taken off the in-game leadership role. I think it's really hard to guess how Hampus is going to do in this new iteration of ninjas, it depends how he is utilized. If I am perfectly honest, what I would like to see out of this ninjas in pajamas team, I would like to see Hampus used as an aggressive lurker or the half lurk role. Um, you'll probably get Brolan doing the dedicated lurk role. I think that's generally what Brolan is best at doing. And then you'll have Esatag, Alexi B and Rez as that kind of entry pack. I think that is the way they should be setting up on T side. Obviously, CT side is a little bit different. I think it's less role-based and more position-based. Um, but on T side, those are definitely the roles that I think would be best utilized. I think Hampus as this half lurk who looks to be aggressive, looks to take timings, kind of plays a little bit outside of the structure, I think could be a really, really great role for Hampus to utilize and potentially 
we could get an even bigger fragging version of Hampus if he doesn't have to focus on in-game leading. If he is just kind of aware of what is going on on the map with Alexi B's calling, with Alexi B kind of structuring the rest of the pieces, then Hampus can be that playmaker, that X factor, that guy who adds a little bit of spice, a little bit of, oh, I don't know what that was, to the play style and make you more effective as a team, make you not so one-dimensional as a team, push you over the edge from being just that kind of consistent hovering around the top 10 to really pushing into the top five and potentially threatening to win titles to have deep runs in events. Now, the final thing I kind of want to talk about with this new Ninjas in Pajamas is, was Plopsky a problem? No, I don't think he was a problem. I think it's either you get rid of Plopsky or you get rid of Hampus because just the potential upside of Rez and Brolan is way too much. You're not going to get rid of either of them. They're your best two players. Hampus, again, I think the potential upside on the playmaking and just his style of play is a little bit bigger than Plopsky. And so really it comes down to Plopsky or Essatag. I've got to be really brutally honest. I don't really see a big difference between the two. If I'm honest, in terms of players, I think Plopsky, again, he was a guy who he came in with a lot of hype right around him in Ninjas in Pajamas. And when Plopsky first played for the Ninjas, he was fragging out like he was putting up big fucking numbers. The problem is, is that I think he just ended up getting left by the wayside because he wasn't res. So he wasn't the outright clear star player. He's not an orper. So, again, he's not going to get the resources and be an outright star player. Plopsky just ended up being that guy who had to fill in. He just had to fill in the shit roles. He had to do what was needed to round ninjas out as a team and i think that just meant he suffered individually i don't think plopsky's a bad player at all in fact i think he's a good player and i would love it if plopsky got picked up by another team in the future i think it would be sad if plopsky kind of just disappeared to the wayside um you know he's still a pretty young guy if we have a look at him he's still only 20 years old um he's got an immense amount of experience at tier one and I actually think if you put him on the right team and you put him in the right roles, he could definitely frag. I still think there's a good fragger in there. There's a great player in there. Um, and I hope that that's not the last we've seen of Plopsky. I hope we see more of Plopsky moving forwards. And the final, final, final thing that I want to talk about is Alexi B is not a fragger. All right, he's not a fragging in-game leader. I would say he kind of is in advance of someone like Hooksy. I think he's a little bit more impactful and a little bit more reliable in an individual sense than a player like Hooksy, but I wouldn't quite put him on the level of a Carrigan, right? I would say Carrigan is maybe a, a decent comparison in terms of the way they have impact as an in-game leader. It's more going to be based on playmaking, having impact frags, rather than having very many games where they drop 30 and just have insane raw output. So I do think you are potentially just a little bit taking a smidge of firepower, a smidge of impact out of the lineup. I think Plopsky is probably going to put up more raw numbers over a year than Alexi B is. Could be wrong about that. Who knows? It's not like Plopsky was going fucking ham anyway. You know, he was kind of just meh, just doing whatever on the frag in front, never really impressing, never shit in the bed too hard or not too often. So that is definitely a question mark is you have probably toned down the firepower just a smidge. And are you going to have enough firepower on this team? Brolan and Rez, if they can step up, and fulfill their potential, which I think is, fuck, 1.09 and 1.08. It's being up there with simple. Okay, maybe not simple, but being up there around, you know, those those simple numbers. You know, fuck it. If Blame F can do it, you know, Rez and Brolan can do it. They're good enough players. So if these guys can buck these numbers up and more consistently carry... Okay, maybe we're cooking with some ink and Hampus, Essatag and Alexi B just need to get theirs. Realistically, I don't think Rez or Brolan are suddenly going to explode into super mega fragger territory and suddenly be like top five in the world contenders. Even though I think they have the ability, I don't see it happening overnight. And so more realistically, we're going to need Hampus and Essatag to step up and get a little bit more fragging done. I think Essatag will be more comfortable getting a bit more done from a rifling role. 
I think a lot of this hinges on Hampus. I think a lot of this hinges on how Hampus adjusts, how he adapts to no longer being the caller. And if he continue to have impact, to get frags, to create space, and to be a playmaker for this Ninjas team. That is the linchpin, I think, is Hampus. I think he and how he adapts and what role he fulfills, particularly on T side, I think is going to be the key for this new Ninjas roster. And can Alexi B get something out of my boy Hampus? Oh, another quick thing to mention is obviously potential issues with switching to communicating in English. I think we have to see how this team does because Sweden and Nordic countries in general are famed for having incredibly good English and from learning English from a very young age and from learning English to a very high level. I think it's some ridiculous stat like the conversational English level in Sweden is higher than the level of conversational English in the US of A, particularly in certain states. Uh, I, that might be like one of them made up fucking old tale stats that just it isn't true and is just like one of those things you say uh, that sounds good, but it does sound fucking good. That's all from me on this video. Let's see how Ninjas in Pajamas do moving forward. Ninjas in Pajamas were actually the team in around 2014-ish that got me into CS. I was a big fan of that Get Right Forest, um, Zist and Freiburg core you know, with Makalele and Alu and stuff knocking about. So I do have like a little soft spot in my heart for ninjas. Um, as much as the organization has tried to make themselves seem like a bunch of cunts a lot of the time, um, I do still have a soft spot for ninjas in pajamas in my heart. So I hope they do well. If you didn't like this video, what's wrong with you? Like who hurt you in your past? Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you next time, boys and girls.